Welcome to Rubberband Live, the Australian recruitment and talent acquisition vodcast and podcast. I am Eden Haddock, your host and the creator of Rubberband, the recruitment network for all. Let's go live. And we are live. Welcome everyone out there to today's episode of Rubber Band Live, which is lessons learned with my startup business. Now, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I live and work on, the Wadawarung and Jarjarwarung people. I recognize their continuing connection to the land and waterways. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and I extend this to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So welcome everyone out there and welcome to our panel. Today we are joined by Jordan, Naomi and Charlotte. It is so great to see you three. How are you? Hey, Eden. Hi, guys. Wow. Well, Thanks, we're all well. Saying. Fabulous, fabulous. So now I have just had a notification that our Facebook stream is not working. So unfortunately, Facebook viewers, I'm hoping you have realized you can jump onto LinkedIn or YouTube. Uh, I don't know why I'm calling that out, because if you are a Facebook user, you can't see or hear what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Thirty as always. Thirty as always. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Best place for us to start today. Let's go around the room. Um, for anyone out there that hasn't met Jordan, Charlotte or Naomi, um, I'm sure they're going to love hearing your stories today because they're really inspiring stories. So Charlotte, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself or tell the audience a little bit about yourself and we'll start there. Okay, sure. Um, I'm Charlotte Hall. I'm the founder and CEO of Hallway People. We uh, look after exec sales and uh, business support roles. The, I guess the recruitment agency with a little bit of a twist is around uh, not only do we recruit, but we also work with our clients on employer branding and building really great workplaces that I can feel fabulous about placing great people at. And so the way that we do that is that we work um, quite deeply in video marketing. So you may have seen some of Four Ways videos that are out there in the market and we support our clients through video marketing. That's hallway. I've got, from a personal perspective, about 25 years in the biz. I know I don't look that old, but... <laughs> but you don't? But yeah, for a, fair, a fair while in the biz. Okay. So at least, you know, the thing that comes with the wrinkles is also apparently a bit of wisdom. A so bit of and I agree, you don't look that you don't look that age. Believe me, oh, I wish thank I looked you. I'll pay you later, even. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Naomi, over to you. Let's let's hear about you. You've got a great story thank to share. Tell us all about yourself. Thank you. So excited to be here. Um, so yes, my name's Naomi. I am the founder and director of Moss & Co, Moss & Co Consulting. So we specialise in business support roles, predominantly within the legal space. Um, been doing legal recruitment for seven years now, so that's kind of where we've slotted in. That's our niche. Um, prior to starting Moss & Co, I obviously have been in agency for six years um, and also an ex-real estate agent. So always worked within kind of a people-centric area. Um, also worked in the call centre, which was horrendous, but um, we were yeah. going to talk about that. Um, so, yeah, and Moss & Co, uh, we've been going really, really well kind of over the last year in the legal space and, uh, you know, PA, EA kind of legal support roles. Um, and very similar to Charlotte in the regard that we kind of work with our clients, not only to recruit, um, but we actually do a little bit of consulting with some of our smaller clients as well. So we have a bit of a, a I like to call it an outsource consulting uh, platform, which some of the smaller law firms that we work with, they have uh, a plan to grow in the next year, two years, and we kind of help them map that out and what those roles look like. Uh, we've got one particular client that we work with um, where, you know, her brief to me was something completely different to what we ended up placing. So it was actually kind of working with them strategically and uh, kind of, yeah, mapping that out, which I really, really enjoy doing. Same as Charlotte, you know, it, it's really nice to see when your client 
genuinely can you know kind of go where they want to go because of your support but also build a team that's um a great culture for them so that's a bit about me excellent thank you naomi and we also have our startup expert today jordan betridge tell us all about yourself jordan for those who haven't met you way to set the tone thanks mate Uh Um, thanks everyone for joining. If, um, if I've not um, ever been seen before, my name is Jordan Betteridge. I am uh, currently the CRO and CMO of a company called Recruit Wizard. Recruit Wizard is uh, one of Australia's longest standing privately held ATS and CRM uh, solutions for recruitment agencies and internal talent teams that we support across all across the Asia Pacific, uh, but more predominantly here in Australia and New Zealand. I am also the founder of an organization called Random Group, which focuses on um, tech enablement, um, brands, uh, brand enablement and realization, and also work with uh, recruit, uh, recruitment agencies on a, a consultation level to help sort of bring their, uh, their vision to life, sort of turning their, their story and sort of helping realize it through their brand as well um, in, in marketing. Um, I'm also the former founder um, and director of an organization called Volcanic, uh, which was recently uh, acquired back in 2019 by the Access Group. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Well, so audience, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about these, the, the, the journey of these startups. Um, and Charlotte and Naomi and Jordan are going to share their experiences uh, and some of the lessons that they've learned along the way. The way we're going to do it, we're going to split it into three uh, components. We're going to talk about laying the foundations of a startup. We're going to talk about financial lessons for startups and also the digital landscape and leveraging technology. Now, along the way, audience, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat box. We can read your questions there and we'll try to address as many of them as possible. Where we're going to start now, we're going to go around the room. So this this component is called From Scratch to Success, Laying the Foundations of a Startup. So we want to hear about those foundations, how you actually kicked off, what made you kick off. So Charlotte, we'll start with you. Tell me about the foundations of your startup. Sure. Okay. Uh, a couple of things. Well, firstly, I think to talk about the foundations, I've got to talk about the why and where the motivation was for me. And I think it was, you know, I'd been wanting to start my own brand for about 10 years and I'd had the brand name for that long. It was something that I just wanted to do for a really long time. And perhaps if you're out there watching, there's, it's, there's, there's a lot of fear involved with taking a step to stand outside of an organisation where you've got that comforted salary for yeah. a good period of time. And I think especially as you progress your career and you get a little bit more, um, I, I guess, you know, it, it becomes even a higher risk, you know, adding that family and mortgages and kids and all that sort of stuff. All of a sudden it's, oh, that's all a bit frightening and a bit scary. Uh, but I think what happens is when we when we ignore that little itch of of, of that that chip on your shoulder saying, have a go at it, you can do this yourself, what yeah. happens is you start to, one day it just becomes a, it's not a choice anymore, it has to happen, and that's what happened with me. So uh, six months ago we started Hallway People. It was uh, to answer a space in the market that I really thought there was a gap missing, and that, I guess, is my first tip is around, and a lesson that I've learned is even if we, if you're good at what you do, and a lot of the recruiters that go to want to start their own gig generally are very good at what they do. You know, they've usually got the gumption, the motivation, the will, the determination to get stuff done. Uh, but they also need to have that um, specific niche around how they're going to be different in the market. What's your point yeah. of difference? You know, yeah. and generally, as um, I'm sure Jordan and Naomi will talk to, you generally are the point of difference, Right. And so how do you sell that story? How do you turn it into something? One of my biggest learnings was I don't really like talking about myself. I'll talk about everyone else. I'm not very good about myself. So I've learned that and we'll, we can all attest to that as well. And so that's something I would say was a big thing I had to get right in the beginning and very much um, talk about, okay, what's my point of difference? Um, and it is the HR background that I have along with recruitment and sales uh, and um, being able to add that personal branding stuff. So 
from a startup perspective, those are the things I had to look at first. Mm. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. What about yourself, Naomi? Tell me about, you know, laying the foundations of Moss & Co. Wh where did you start and what was the most important for you? Yeah, so I... I suppose I worked in an agency for five years, very much got comfortable, like what Charlotte was saying in terms of that kind of comfort key. Um, and I wanted to explore and better myself and get better opportunities. So I left there and went on to another business. Now that business that I was at was a great business, but I was setting up the Melbourne office. And I kind of thought to myself, I could do this for myself here. I've got relationships. It was a real kind of, I suppose, light bulb moment where I thought, actually, what am I doing? I could do this for myself. So that's kind of where Moth & Co came from. It came a lot earlier than I anticipated, I'll be honest. Um, I did not think that I was going to set up straight away. It was an idea that I had in my head at the beginning of like March. And by the end of March, everything was undergoing and it was like, oh my goodness, okay, it's happening. Um, yeah. But that was the best thing for me because I think I am very much a risk adverse person and if I'd have thought about it for too long I would have talked myself out of it yeah right. so um but going back on what Charlotte was saying about point of difference that was something that was really kind of important to me was that point of difference and yeah not to kind of toot your own horn but when I was speaking to clients about okay so why do you actually work with me obviously I can place people but what is the reason that you're actually working with me, you know, compared to some other agencies that are in the market. And the thing that came up quite consistently was that genuine care. And mm. I think that a lot of recruitment agencies can say that they're different, that they do things this way, that, you know, we are very different. But I don't think a lot of agencies have that genuine care for their candidates and their clients. And I would much rather, in, in my eyes, less is more. So, a lot of agencies they focus on you know the monetary value and placements equal money and the more placements you get the more money you get that's not how we kind of work and operate we kind of work in a genuine care so sometimes our candidates won't take the jobs that we are um you know putting them forward for and that's okay as long as yeah. it's the right position for them um mm. so that was that was my point of difference really and I thought I'm not going to be able to bring this point of difference to an agency unfortunately because there are a lot of agencies that you have KPIs on your head numbers of placements you have to make money that you have to make even before you make any money yourself yeah so I thought if I want to do things the way I want to do them I'm gonna to have to start my own business Fabulous. And Love hey, that. what a success story for both of you. This is this is awesome. Jo Jordan, tell me in terms of laying the foundation. So if there are people out there that are listening or watching that perhaps have an idea, uh, we've talked about the need in the market and we've talked about, you know, making sure that you know your key differentiator in the market. Tell me, are there other things that you need to consider? Are there things like, you know, tools and software or legal considerations you're, you're someone that's been through this process a number of times where you've had an idea and you've you know you've set those foundations tell me what do you think anyone out there should be focusing on what what, what what's primarily important yeah it's a it's a big long list um and I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, which is you know something that I've, I've kind of seen on, on a lot like a load of different levels but I think um, when it comes to setting up a business, uh, especially in, in 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 our market, a lot of a lot of the work, the hard sort of admin work in the back end, is done for us in our previous roles. Mm. Um, a lot of things we need to consider is you know the legalities around being even uh, like able to trade. Um, so you know, getting a business name um, registered with ASIC, um, making sure that you've got. Um, you know, legal representation and, and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of, a lot of the time uh, when people have come to me over, over the years and, and that's, there's a lot of people that I've spoken to that they're not sure that they, they feel like they're, it's going to be very expensive uh, to get things set up because once you, you know, you're registered as a business, you need to look at your contracts. You need to make sure that someone sort of looked over things from a legal perspective. So you're protected. Um, mm. What we got to remember. Um, and, and Naomi said this uh, when, when, 
when you have an idea that's right for you as an individual and a professional and in like it, it becomes like a an out-of-body experience you you have this idea it's a concept and then because you mean mean so you know you mean to get there so uh, so intently it all, all always almost always just falls into your lap and then you can forget all of these really sort of important things from a legality perspective i think if anyone's out there today watching uh, that is that's considering whether it's in recruitment or just in general wanting to start or step out on their own there are a number of affordable um almost like self-service tools out there that you can um go to an approach um mm. and, and something to remember if you're not not really sure what to do it's always free to ask if someone wants to charge you um to to give you advice on setting your business up setting up abns tax file numbers uh, uh, company numbers and, and legal contracts stay away from them yeah. uh, there's, there's plenty of ways to get information for free and there's plenty of services out there that are just like you know these these two lovely girls here that you know are trying to make a difference in their market as well um mm. I will give an unsolicited plug to a business called Lawpath, lawpath.com.au. Uh, you can actually go on there and pay a monthly subscription um, and have everything set up for you um, with included for advice as well. So it's definitely somewhere that I'd definitely recommend to set up. I've seen hundreds of business go through that. And also myself, I've set up my business through Lawpath as well. Um, Fantastic. Um, tools, if you're in recruitment, your, your business is only as powerful as your own database. Um, bit of a selfless plug here. Recruit was it's an Australian owned, uh, Australian owned and privately held recruitment CRM and ATS. We're, we're literally in the business of making, um, you know, sure that your data is protected. It's easy to use. It can be reused, um, you know, and and you can provide a, a like a, a genuine service to both your candidates, your clients, and even your partners as well. Um, mm -hmm. So having having somewhere where you can sort store, security, manage, and nurture your data should be definitely on and, on and this is coming from me the first priority before even looking into your brand and how you look um, yeah because the integrity of how you nurture your data is how you will also be able to deliver your service um, of course some of us might be great at keeping things in a nice organized chaos up here but well, it's, yeah, right. it's, just <laughs> not, it's just not scalable um, and it's about protecting yourself as well because it's very easy to go deep into this concept and then find yourself in a position where you might be a bit overwhelmed with keeping up with things and, and nurturing and nurturing your time and, and all that sort of stuff. And the last thing we need is, you know, for anyone to feel burnt out. It's an exciting time. It should just be easy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and, and we talk, you know, that, uh, Jordan, you've mentioned a little bit about the financial side of it. And I think when you've got an idea... That you want to bring to market you've identified your core differentiator you've laid those foundations i think a lot of people struggle to look at the financial side yeah. um actually understand how to build a business that is going to be sustainable when you've got all of that excitement about bringing it to market um, yeah. so I really want to focus on the next side, really, uh, we're going to call the next, uh, the next question around money matters. So financial lessons that you've, that you've learned mm -hmm. along the way. And, and I'll start with, um, you Charlotte. So tell me with, you know, launching hallway people, how did you approach that financial side? What, what, what did you do to make sure that your business was going to be sustainable? Mm -hmm. Good question. I really didn't do a lot at all, Eden. I was extremely unprepared. And this is one of my biggest lessons. You know, I am a salesperson, you know, not a finance person. And so my background, whilst it is certainly commercial from a business perspective, um, from a small business point of view, it's just, you know, I'm uneducated in that space, quite frankly. And so I learned the hard way in that oh, crap, I, I need to have all of these things in place as far as um, cash flow, treasury, all the different things that I need as far as growing a business quickly because essentially I've heard now since I started Hallway that for a lot of recruiters, especially people that have got a good network out there, what happens is that we go out and start our own, own brands and your clients and people that love you out there come out of the woods really quickly and say, oh, you're back on the tools, you've got your own thing, can we support you? 
Mm. And it just boomed very quickly. And I got distracted and was very much like, fill, 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 fill very quickly. And a lot of the really good fundamental stuff that, um, you know, both Jordan and Naomi were talking about, I completely neglected. And mm. so, you know, that would be my, uh, one of my um, tips would be make sure you get the finances, the tech and the um, legal stuff done first. Uh, I did that after the fact. I was lucky. There was a few moments where it could have been touch and go. Oh, crap, can I still have the name? Mm. So, um, and to Jordan's point about tech as well, just briefly, sorry to go back a, a couple of um, points, but database is so important. Um, uh, self, a, a plug here to Recruit Wizard. I have got Recruit Wizard in my business. It's fantastic. Um, it's easy to use. It's Australian-based. I know I sound like I'm just selling the biz but <laughs> honestly hand on heart <laughs> <Jordan Thank you>. <laughs> um, <laughs> hand on heart it's a really really good user friendly um you know for a small business cost effective as well and um and the team has really helped me to understand how i can use that data well mm. so um i guess financially uh those are the things you've got to get in place stay away from the sparkly things that i'm easily drawn to like all the creative stuff that you end up like buying, I'll buy that and I'll buy that because that might help me. Focus on what matters and really think hard about what matters for your business. It's really great advice. And I've fallen personally fallen into the trap of the sparkling thing. I went mm -hmm. on to all of my subscriptions a few weeks ago and went, I am churning through money because I see something and I'm like, I'll get that app. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Yeah. That looks really yeah. cool. And I don't use any of them. It's really good advice. Yeah. Totally. And I mean, it's good for learning, right? So go and do it as much as you can. I love to look at everyone at competitors and what everyone else is doing. And it's great for learning. But then we always forget to unsubscribe or. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> vanity check is so important. I honestly have wasted disgusting amounts of money on subscriptions that I didn't use properly. Yeah. And you forget they're there until you, you know, yeah. annually, suddenly all of this money disappears, right? So, yeah. there's some advice out there from me. Check your subscriptions. <laughs> Um, Naomi, over to you. Let's talk money matters, financial lessons that you've learned setting up Moss & Co. Tell, tell me about yeah. your experience. Thank you. So in terms of Moss & Co, I very much, uh, you might know the term bootstrapped, which is where you financially support yourself. There's a lot of companies out there that will provide you with financial support. Um, they'll probably want to take a piece of the pie long term. So it's not something that I'd recommend. But if you are somebody that in a position to start a business, but you don't really have the financials, then there are people out there that can help you with that. Um, but I very much kind of bootstrapped here at Moss & Co. Um, like Charlotte said, um, was very, very lucky at the very, very beginning stages. Um, prior to even properly launching, I had a client reach out to me for an urgent role. And it just so happened that I had a candidate reach out to me at the same time. It worked out, placed them, and I hadn't even launched. I remember sending the first invoice going, I don't even know how to send the invoice because I haven't set up zero yet. Um, and I was in Bali at the time when this person started as well. So I was like, ah. Um, but you know what? Those are the best lessons that have been learned when you kind of just wing it and then it goes well. I wouldn't rec mm. recommend winging it, but... Um, in terms of, you know, financials are very much kind of bootstrapped. I was very, very lucky to have placed somebody prior to launching. So that kind of set me up for success. Um, going on the subscription stuff, it's quite funny, really. I'm actually a little bit the opposite of you guys. I kind of, I'm so, so money conscious. So I don't really spend it. Um, I do buy handbags and I love buying handbags, don't get me wrong. But when it Teach comes to your ways. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like subscribing to something because I'm like, no, nah, I'm not paying you a monthly fee for nothing. So even uh, I, I use MailChimp for my mailers. I don't pay for that. I'm not paying for that. So in terms of subscriptions I kind of keep it very very light but maybe I'm still in that startup mindset where I'm like this could all crash and burn tomorrow and I'll have no money so I don't want to put everything on um the only thing I do pay a lot of money for is LinkedIn recruiter and that's probably been quite imperative in my market which is very candidate short 
So spending money on tech when it comes to that, it's not just CRM, ATS, or, you know, you're kind of invoicing and accounting software. It's also maybe use something like LinkedIn Recruiter or, you know, another kind of tech that where you can actually, like even Seek is so expensive and you could spend so expensive. Yeah. heaps mm. of money on Seek. And that's the one thing I didn't realize before setting up is how expensive all of this stuff actually is. Like I knew that LinkedIn was around $600 a month, if not minus 800. Um, then you've got kind of your CRM. So it all adds up. Um, so yeah, so going back to financials, I kind of bootstrapped it, made a placement um, prior to launching, which kind of set me up for, I suppose, three months of expenses. Um, and then it got the ball rolling. It was momentum. You know, that's what recruitment is. Once you win one, you're like, okay, cool, I can do this. So that was, I suppose, solidifying the fact that I could actually do this because I made that placement. Um, and then it, moving forward, I always keep at least six months of expenses in the business account. I've actually, um, what we made last year, I only took a very, 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 very small salary. My friends laugh at me because they're like, I don't know how you've survived on that. But uh -huh. I want to keep it all in the business and reinvest it. Um, and I suppose that that for me is just a way that I feel comfortable doing so. But I am also very lucky, not lucky, that I don't have children. I don't have responsibilities. So, you know, I've got my dog. I've got my partner. I live a very kind of, I suppose, cruisy life. Um, it would be very different if you had family to support and other things that you had to pay for. Um, I think and really great advice what you say there around mm -hmm. having six months worth of business expenses banked at all times. And I think mm. some of the traps that people, and, and quite recently we saw this when we saw the tech bubble burst, where a lot of uh, startups, um, particularly in the recruitment industry, when they saw that boom, rather than keeping, a, a, I guess, a nest egg of money to keep their business sustainable. They tried to rapidly scale up and they hired lots of people and, but then it burst and they didn't have that. I think that's really great advice for anyone out there. So you can still scale, but to make sure that if something does crash or if you're yeah. cost like for yourself, like if suddenly no one's hiring legal for the next six months because the legal industry crashes, you've got, you've got yeah. six months to be able to recover. And, and I think yeah. that's really nice. I think mm. that comes from, I suppose, as a child, my mum is has always told me to save. And my dad has always told me to have a rainy day fund. And so that kind of, I suppose I didn't realise that going into business, but subconsciously and looking back, I've always been that person to be like, right, okay, so I need this in order to do this. And I, so yeah. Yeah, that's quite important. And and I think a lot of people as, as well, when they see the money coming in, they see it as their own money. Whereas when you're set up as a company, you do have lots of taxes to pay, GFT oh, yeah. to pay, <laughs> uh, a heap of outgoings. That money is yours, but it's not really yours. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you, you kind of have to... Trap. I've I've heard a lot is. of people fall into the GST trap where they haven't kept that aside and oh, uh, suddenly they get their quarterly, which is outrageous. Like mine's outrageous. I can't believe it's how outrageous. Much it yeah, it is. And, and you need to make sure that you don't forget because the money that's coming into your bank account has got that GST attached to it. You need to magnify and glass it and put it aside. Like you, you can't assume it's all yours. I think that's really great advice no. too. Um, no. so Jordan, what do you think in terms of advice for people out there when they're in that stage, they have they have laid the foundations, they've, you know, bought their new brand to market, their new service to market. What what are some financial lessons out there that you believe that, that people should be focusing on? <laughs> um, I wouldn't take financial advice for me if I could. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here going, I can either provide value or I can just share where I've like monumentally insert, don't say this word on live. Uh, I've just messed up. Um, money, money is the most important thing for a business, um, but it's also, it's equally not the most important thing for a business, just depending on who you are. I think all of the advice that Naomi and um, Charlotte have shared and 
and yourself eating is really really cool um having having a bank and, and and all that sort of stuff is like a bank of like savings fund or a rainy day fund is really really important um i'm also a really big believer of there's you know like there's no time like the present sort of thing if you if you if you think that you trust yourself you trust your integrity is like because don't get me wrong i'm not struggling for cash but I, you know it's never going to be amazing um, I, i'm never going to really be able to step back and go i've got enough money i don't think anyone would mm. um, but yeah having having those reserve funds gst i will be completely honest in my first year of running random group i was one of those people that fell into that trap no, um, that's, common. that's very common it is, it is the biggest uh lesson i was you know working on my own for the first time i mean yes i've worked with really great business partners in the past i was working on my own um you know COVID hit it was you know every day was like what's going to happen my partner and i were like oh you know how's this gonna you know how's it all gonna end up um mm -hmm. and yeah i fell into that pit because i thought i needed all the cash i, I can keep and, and all that sort of stuff so yeah um, i think i'm mm -hmm. living proof that you can really really mess up um I'm very happy to say i'm out of debt um and I'm, I'm you know it took me a while to get there but those sort of mm -hmm. mistakes and stuff that you know you can make it are definitely real and i'm, I'm a person that's been been involved in those so um mm -hmm. in terms of in terms of subscriptions i learned this very early in and and expenditure for software just because it looks cool or someone else has got it doesn't mean it works for you yeah no no, no. the fundamentals you know i'm a i'm a you know huge fan of like automobiles and motorbikes you know eden and charlotte you probably hear me talk about motorbikes every time we chat it's probably just oh. the same thing but you know i could have four motorbikes but i don't need them um, mm. you know it's it's just think about what's necessary do you need the pro plan or can you stick with the starter that you know don't don't fall victim to the value of a 12-month subscription on something that you can't test go mm. spend a bit extra and go for the monthly and really decide whether that's going to help you or not um mm. and you know, really ask yourself if i'm going to look into this technology am i really going to use it is it going to give me benefit um, and if you can ask for references as well, speak to other people that are in a similar place, uh, place as you to make sure that, you know, mm. they, they've gotten value out of it and, and the things that they did to, to kind of like hold themselves accountable to that, ex that, that expense. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think you gave really a good advice earlier on in, in this stream, Jordan, where, you know, you, you look at, and, and Naomi, you mentioned those business essentials, the things that you, that are critical, that you need 100%. I think it's identifying what those are, but doing enough research because there are free things out there. And I yeah. think Jordan gave really great advice around, you know, legal support, for example, because you look at what's essential, what do I need? And the first thing you do, you'll try and tick all of those boxes off. Um, so you can go to market and and it can be a really easy trap to fall in to go, I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to pay for that. Um, and then, of course, if it looks really cool and really sexy and it's, you know, it's all bells and whistles, you naturally as a human being, you're going to be drawn to it and you're going to buy it. So it's really trying to remove that emotive response from what mm. you're looking at or what you need for your business and really doing your research because it is so surprising what you can get for free. Um, yeah. And it is so surprising the difference in prices. I mean, even if we look at, you know, ATS, for example, I know we, we talked about that a little bit. And I, I mean, it, the scale of those costs mm. is, is so different mm. you know quite often the multinational ones that people are really drawn to because they've got a you know great marketing strategy are so much more expensive yet they're not doing anything more than what other ATSs are doing locally they're they, they just you are paying for the name them. yeah mm. yeah I think that's a good lesson as well like don't pay for the name and don't pay mm. for how cool you might be perceived to purchase it because it's irrelevant. It's, yeah. it's really yeah. what is going to be fundamental for your business. Yeah. Now, so we're going into the technology side and that's our third theme that we wanted to cover off today, which is the digital landscape and leveraging technology. So Charlotte, let's, let's go into that a little bit more. I know we've touched Ooh. on it already, but tell me how have you made sure that you're leveraging the right technology? How are you using technology even things like ai that we're seeing so much more of tell me about that mm. 
Well, AI has been um, act, been great so far for me. I've really enjoyed getting to learn about uh, ChatGPT and how that can help me. And, and and Jordan actually suggested I go to the twenty dollar a month plan, to which I went, oh. And <laughs> trust, as he said to me, trust me, it's worth it. And so I did, and it's amazing. And why is it amazing when you are um, building a business on your own? The ways in which it can really help and and what I found over time is the more I feed into it about my business and finding the right prompts, the more that it learns about me and, you know, my authentic style and also, you know, the brand in which I'm growing as well, that it's creating fabulous content for me when I feed it information or it can check, like things, for example, things like, writing great job ads you know I can write one and then I'll chuck it in there and say do it better um and it generally it really does I read it and go wow that would be amazing it will then help me with video scripts I write I do video job ads as well for every ad uh, every job that I do and it will then just spit all that out for me yes you've got to edit yes you've got to make it sound a little bit more authentically you but as I said, as time goes on and the more that we feed the information back to AI, the more that it's like a human getting to know me and saying, yeah. this is your style, this is how I think your tone shows up. And more and more I'm getting information and, and, and content coming back, you know, client emails, candidate emails, anything and everything you can think of your voice that you're right they're putting in writing and sending out there um chat gpt can learn and really help you and i'm so much more efficient plus i'm mm. a really bad fella so it really does help me i'm terrible i i'm the worst and i'm a terrible typer as well so it saves my <laughs> bacon many yeah. times <laughs> yeah um so yeah so that's ai and then a couple of other things i wanted to touch on if that's okay would be around um uh the video stuff. We talked earlier um, and both of the guys talked about the, uh, you know, you don't have to spend all the money on the fan dangled stuff that's out there. And there's a lot that we could use from a video platform tool. We know now that videoing, putting video jobs ads up there or any sort of business videos out there, you're 800 times more likely to be interacted with from you know, your client base or, you know, your prospects that you're going after and your candidates. So, Mm. but what's important to know is that when we're starting out, what I learned is that I didn't have to spend a thousand dollars a month on a platform that I knew would, would work for me. I could learn all about it myself and um, you don't need, all the tools are at your, you know, if you love Canva and Canva's really doesn't cost a lot, um, yeah, and you've yeah. got a smartphone, you can create some really amazing content, um, mm. which if anyone wants to look at hallway people, hopefully you'll agree that it's pretty cool. So, it's too. Like I, I find Canva the funnest part of my role. Like I, I really too. enjoy it. Me too. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there's just, you can do so much creative work with it. The sky's the limit. It's awesome. It totally is. And so that would be something I would um, highly recommend you know, get online and have fun with it and, you know, get all that happening. But be online as well. It, you need that online presence. If you are starting out and you are on your own, especially, don't be afraid of it. You're going to create some really bad content to begin with in video. We all did. I want to yeah. say a bad word as well, but I won't. And what matters is consistency and keeping on going. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's how I would talk to digital Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Really great advice there. How about yourself, Naomi? Tell me, leveraging technology, the Moss & Co, what have been yeah. the lessons for I need to learn from Charlotte to use chat GBT. I have used it a couple of times, um, but I haven't been the biggest fan of it. So I tend to write a lot of stuff myself, which obviously takes time. And that's one of the things that you don't have when you're a business is time. Mm. Um mm. So, yeah, so I I think for me, kind of technology has, um, I've actually recently, to be honest, I have used Canva and I've used Canva for a long time, but I have recently hired 
um, somebody who works for me kind of part time and she does all of my social media and content stuff. So awesome. I mm. am not responsible for that. Um, we, I do love doing it, but I, I'm, I'm not very good at it. And I do criticize what I put out there. She just says, well, we're doing it. And she posts it and I'm like, okay, so we're here. Um, but going back on the video stuff, she is on at me for doing more video content. Like Charlotte says, 800 times more likely to people by people, right? If mm. you're just on LinkedIn writing uh, a scripted, you know, post that doesn't have mm. an image or a video attached to it, People will skim through that. They probably won't read the whole thing. They'll read the first two lines and then they'll skim through. People are much more likely to watch a video or mm. look at an image or look at an interactive Canva post. So it doesn't have to be your face, an interactive Canva post, because it's way more engaging. Um, and so that's something that I do need to learn. I do need to do a lot more of. Um, and now I've got Sean working with me. That will be something that I will be doing because she is very much kind of, I suppose, pushing me in that direction. Um, awesome. and, and I secretly call her a hype girl because she's basically mm -hmm. behind me going, yep, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, leveraging, <laughs> leveraging technology is really important. I can't say that I'm the best at that. Um, I just. I, I just don't know. I, I suppose I don't know how to to do the content stuff. I'm not very creative. I just like talking to people and and hey, making money that way. <laughs> that's a good lesson, right? And, and I think it's really important. You know, you don't have to be the expert in every component of your business. It's identifying what do I enjoy and and where do I add the oh. maximum value. And then what can I, when it, the time is right, outsource or bring in an expert or, you know, purchase technology or, mm. you know, work with a partner that's going to be able to bring more value. It's it's really identifying yeah. where it's, am I? Because your time, you're right. Like we, we don't have a lot of time and we've got to actually yeah. make time to get it, the it's right. Just, it's, like it's, it's. So there's a lot more, Naomi, that you've just said that publicly. Like a lot of people go in there thinking and they have this, this mm -hmm. huge expectation that they have to do everything for themselves when you don't. Mm. Um, I, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we are literally specialists in a pe people-focused industry surrounded by other people introducing them to more people. Mm. You know? yeah. And it's, you know, if we can't lean on, you know, the people, other people to help us in areas that we, you know, we're not strong and admit to that, then you know, it's going to be a struggle. So it's good. I have yeah. hat off to you. Just say, you know mm. what, it's not, it's not my bag. I know it's important. That's, you know, great, making amazing business decisions, recognising the importance of it. And then, you know, outsourcing and delegating to someone else that's willing to, yeah. you know, to do yeah. the rest of it. And just following on from that, I think I, at the beginning of the year, so not the beginning of the year, January, but at, in June when it was big end of, you know, beginning of financial year, I, I wrote a bit of a plan and I said to myself, okay, so what are the things that I need to do in business? And it was really long, you know, and really basic admin stuff, content, all of the things. What are the things that I am good at? And what are the $10 tasks that I can outsource? Yeah. And so I really looked at that and I thought, okay, I'm good at this, not so good at this, not so good at this. So that's when I looked at getting Sean on and she's going to grow with the business too. Her role is not just going to be content. I'm really kind of hoping that I can invest in her and she can, you know, grow with the business. Um, but there were other things that are on that list as well. And one of them is, um, I suppose, the kind of technology side. I haven't got a Scooby about accounting. I don't, didn't know, I mean, I knew about GST, but I didn't know anything like that. So, you know, I've got a bookkeeper that I work with on a quarterly basis who does all of that because if I was left to do my bath myself, I would F it up. So yeah. it's about yeah. looking I get it's it. about looking at your 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 ten I call them ten dollar tasks, they're not ten dollar tasks, but they're tasks that don't, you know, I can sit there on Canva for three hours and not get anywhere. Sean mm. can sit there for three hours and do a whole three months worth of content. And that yeah. to me is so valuable and that means that i can go get my hair done on a wednesday morning if i need to <laughs> because the time yeah yeah absolutely invaluable agreed agreed and um 
someone just posted such a smart approach, uh, mm. Naomi. So really resonating wow. with the audience. It's really great Thank advice. You. Yeah. So, Jordan, we, are we going to go to the final now? I'm just seeing the, the times now. So, finally, what do you think the biggest lessons for you or the surprises that you've encountered over the years in business? What have they been? Is that for me or for you, Jordan? Uh, we'll go to Jordan first. Yeah. Mm. Here's, here, Jordan. Switch it up. Yeah. Oh. Let's mix it up a bit. Mm. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, self reflection. Um, that you know and this is coming from many years ago and i'm happy to say this openly as well i'm i'm a sober man i haven't touched a drop of alcohol or anything in four years um i had a lot of problems with it mm. uh, and mental health is a big thing for me uh and I, I i coach and work with people daily on mental health especially those that are starting businesses or trying to nurture their businesses whilst nurturing themselves um, and the biggest surprise and lesson, not surprise, it, it was no surprise. If I was treating myself the way I used to treat myself, then <laughs> it's never going to end up well. Um, mm. But the biggest, biggest lesson I've learned is sometimes you have to take a step back and you have to, you have to give yourself some time because the more you, you hammer on something and the more you feel like you're not getting anywhere, the harder it's going to get. So, mm. When you're when you're an, when you're an extrovert, I call myself an introverted extrovert. I love sharing advice and I love working with people and I love you know paying contribution to other people's growth because it, you know people do that for me every day as well. You know, you can call me a subject expert, but I still have help for myself. I've got coaches all over the world that I, I seek you know counsel from all the time. Um, mm. Sometimes you've just got to give it. You owe it to yourself. If you're feeling burnt out, don't ignore the signals. Um, mm -hmm. because you will, make, you will make mistakes and it will damage you. Um, mm. Yeah, that's probably my biggest lesson is uh, giving myself I, more. I completely mm. agree. And I have these conversations a lot as well with people in the recruitment industry, particularly through, through the rubber band community. Uh, mm. it, it, it doesn't matter in any form of business how great that business is yeah. if you fall apart and you're not looking yeah. after yourself. Yeah. You, you, need, you need to be the number one priority. So when we talk about, you know, the business essentials that we talked about earlier and making that list and saying, what am I going to buy and what do I not need to buy? What am I going to outsource? You're the number one on that list. Your health mm -hmm. is number one because without you, there is no business, no matter how successful mm -hmm. it is. If you don't look after yourself, your business yeah. will collapse. And, and to be kind to yourself because you're always going to learn along the way and to reach out and network and reach out for help and reach out for support and support others. Yeah. Um, because everyone is in, in it together. You know, we're, yeah. we're all going through the same thing. Um, so Jordan, thank you for your vulnerability. And I think that's really, really beautiful mm. advice. And anyone out there, I want that to be your number one takeaway from today is, yeah. is to put yourself as number one in your yeah. business. Mm. My health is number one. Charlotte, Biggest lessons from you or surprises that you've encountered? Uh, I just wanted to, first of all, just say, yeah, here, here. So important. Um, mm. So very important, guys. You know, I think most of us in the industry have experienced some sort of burnout, whether it's severe mm. or, you know, um, it, just, just starting or whatever it might be. Most people have. It's a really, really busy gig. And, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, when you love something, it's hard to turn it off. So... Yeah. I've experienced it a year ago and it was horrendous. And what happens is debilitating to the point where you can't do anything. You're numb to everything. And, yeah. you know, it, you're forced to take a break. So I, I just wanted to, um, I guess, reiterate um, Jordan's lovely words and be um, and just totally agree. Everybody take care of yourself first. It's really hard to do when you've also got, the pressure of a new business and needing it to do well. Um, mm. You know, um, yeah, it's difficult at the moment and I've got people that support me and surround me and, you know, uh, teenage children that will come in at nine at night and say, mum, go to bed. <laughs> so, right. you know, it's important to have people that um, are going to look out for you and make sure that you're staying well and healthy. So 
Mm. So moving forward, sorry, I know we've only got a few moments left, but um, my key takeaway as well wasn't anywhere near as wonderful as that, but uh, is also just about, we talked a little bit about getting stuck in the weeds today, and that is something that you can fall, you know, victim to. Remember, and one thing I learned was um, BD is always important. Sales is always important, whether you're a recruiter for working for someone else or you're running your own business. Never neglect sales. Even when things are going well, your BD activity needs to happen daily. And I learned that the hard way through, you know, like I said, the first four months just being champagne. And yeah. and then, you know, getting off that and going, oh, the bucket's empty. So, mm. and needing to start again. So BD is my big tip. Don't forget it. Consistency. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. How about yourself, Naomi? Biggest lessons or surprises you've encountered? Actually, to be honest, going back on what Jordan and Charlotte were saying and, and also yourself, Eden, is looking after yourself. I... And very much, I mean, everyone in recruitment, you look out for others, right? We're a people business. We think about other people. We're kind of therapists in a way. We talk to people when they're at a really crap time and they're hating their job. They're not liking the culture. They need us to support them in finding something better. Um, and we hear a lot of stories that come with that. Um, and it was actually uh, realising that I needed to also lean on somebody myself and I can't be that person to constantly absorb all of this stuff and then not have somebody there for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I've actually, you know, kind of spent, I suppose, 28 years of my life not struggling with mental health and then setting up a business and all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is what anxiety is. Wow, yeah. this is what it feels yeah. to be really low. And I yeah. don't know if that was something coming out of COVID or whether that was setting up a business. But, um, you know, recruitment's always been a high and low thing. But when you've got your own business, it is extremely low, but extremely high. Um, yeah. Financial pressures, not knowing when your, you know, next money's coming in, you're not paying yourself a wage. So, you know, you don't have the luxury of that kind of salary coming in on a monthly basis. So all of a sudden, you're completely on your own um, and having to deal with those those stresses. So one of the biggest lessons for me is following on from what you were saying, Jordan, is allowing yourself space and time to heal when you need to do so. I mm -hmm. tend to, I get up every morning and I go to the gym. That's my kind of like vice, that's my time. I also, if I really need to, I go to Bali and just switch off. I can't switch off entirely. I'm going to Bali next week mm -hmm. actually because I'm due that kind of trip. It's a co-working trip. So I'm gonna be alongside eight other business owners. So it's gonna be an absolutely incredible yeah. trip. A Bravo. chance to work. Yeah, a chance to work on the business, not in the business is the idea. Um, but that is so important, like so important. And that's actually probably something that I wish I knew starting up is that you think the highs are high now, you think the lows are low now, you wait till you start your own business and <laughs> everything is on you. And yeah. you yeah. can't afford for you to go down. So exactly. that mm -hmm. is imperative. And also as well, there are people out there that you can lean on and there are people out there that want nothing more than for you to succeed. So it's about absorbing that too. Like I go to a lot of networking events. I spend a lot of time with my friends and just absorb that kind of positivity. Um, and that's something that, that's really important. It's, you actually surround yourself with people because you're working from mm. home on your own with no one around you um like sometimes you can just sit here and go wow I really just need to just talk and I'll yeah. I'll call a friend and her and I have that kind of um kind of she does it to me and I do it to her and and I call her and I go hey I've had a really crap morning and I just Bleh. and then she goes okay do you feel better now and I'm like yeah cool on to the next thing um so that's really important that sounds like a good friend yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. so Look, this just became such a beautiful um, <laughs> rubber band live. <laughs> 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 you, you, 
<laughs> it's been great. Look, thank you so much, Jordan, Naomi, and Charlotte for, for joining today. And thank you everyone out there that's either watching live or is watching the playback or listening on the podcast. Uh, please remember to register for our big event in October, uh, which is Bounce 3, the panel van, www.rubberband.com.au forward slash Bounce 3. Uh, I'm going to stay online with Jordan, Naomi and Charlotte to continue the virtual hug, but everyone out there, we're about to <laughs> stop the stream. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye.